Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerSflyShop.com. Bringing you another fly tying video this week. This week it's a stonefly. You guys know me if you followed my channel for years. I love stonefly patterns and uh, I wanted one to do a little bit better job of matching the ones in my stream. Uh, my local stream here, the one that I fish quite regularly, has a ton of stoneflies in it. It's a good high quality water quality stream and uh, lots of stoneflies in it. And this spring here I was you know, out with clients, picking up logs and stuff like that and showing them the stoneflies in it. One thing that I noticed though were they weren't really a really golden yellow. They were like a dirty, dirty yellow color. And um, so I wanted something to match that a little better. And also I fished the zone stone a lot. Uh, go back and look at that. It's a great Josh Miller pattern. I have a video of it and I fish it in brown a lot. It's my favorite color to fish it in actually. I don't actually fish it. We have golden stones in my area, but I do better with the brown for some reason. So I wanted something, a pattern that I liked was a little bit smaller because I tend to tie a little bit big on my stonefly patterns. I wanted something smaller, uh, so I downsized and went with a brown color. This is what I come up with and it works. So I used switched to wood duck thread instead of yellow. I'm gonna show you at the very beginning of the video one in yellow so you can see what it looks like. Tie it if that's what you like. If you like golden stones, tie it with yellow thread. But I like to tie it in wood duck because I think it matches the ones in my area a little bit better. Anyway guys, enough talking. Here you're gonna see the picture of the fly, then the material list to tie it. Okay, here we see a golden variation of this uh, Maniac Stone. This is tied with yellow thread. I'm going to tie it with wood duck. Let's get into tying it. For a hook, I'm using a Daiichi 1260, this curved hook in a size 12. Uh, I wanted a smaller stone for my area. You can definitely tie it in 8s and 10s. Uh, definitely be fishable in those sizes. But I wanted a small one because that's what I see most in the stream I fish. For a bead, I'm using a Firehole 3.5 Almond Joy. And for lead, I have about 12 wraps of 0.20 lead wire. And then for thread, I'm using some 140 denier wood duck. Use 170 if you have. I mean, sorry, 70 if you have. And then I'm just going to wrap back here to the bend of the hook, and I'm going to make a nice little ball back there that's going to splay my biots out. Make a nice little ball, just a small one, and then come back up with your thread. For a tail on this, I'm going to use some turkey biot quills and golden stone. This is off the back side of the feather and uh, the shorter side of the feather. And we're just going to lay one at a time down on a side and then wrap it back towards that ball there. I'm just going to get it in place and then I'm going to wrap them both back at the same time. Now these don't have a big curve to them, but if there is a curve to it, make sure that curve goes outward so it helps it splay just a little bit better. And then once I get them both on there side by side, the same length all lined up, I just wrap it back towards that little ball. And there you see it splays it out real nice like that. So once I got those on, I'm just going to come back up, wrap over those a little bit, and trim these off. I can usually pull these off, if not, cut them. Then I just want to make a nice smooth transition from my thread to my lead there. And we're going to put the ribbing on this. For ribbing, I'm using some Flex Floss Brown. And I'm going to start it right there at the end of that lead. And again, just to help with the transition. And I'm going to pull on it pretty tight and wrap it back towards those biots. And then smooth it all out as I wrap forward and just create a nice taper here and we're going to just make a nice body on this here try to get it nice and smooth not lumpy and not too big there we go I like that so we're going to bring my thread back up to the front and again I'm going to pull tight on this flex floss wrap it forward and create a rib 
I get about five or six wraps on there and then I'm going to tie it off. Couple good tight wraps and trim off our flex floss. Now I'm going to secure that into place. Don't want those that flex floss to get beat up by a trout's teeth. I'm just going to put a little bit of solar as bone dry on there. Get it the whole way around. Don't put it on too thick. Just enough to cover it. And then we'll hit it with our light. Okay. Once we have that on, we're going to put on some dubbing. And for dubbing, I'm using some near enough sculpting gold brown. And uh, we're just going to put some dubbing on here. Not real thick. Again, I already got built up with that lead, so I don't need a lot of dubbing. Get a nice tight noodle on there. And cover it. I want about a third of the way back from the bead there. So proportions is the main thing. You know, try to keep everything in proportion. Don't get your abdomen thicker than or bigger than your thorax and vice versa. Just make it nice and even. Try to keep everything in proportion. There we go. I really like that a lot. So the next thing I'm gonna use is this is just an old uh, I think it was a bigger, better bird feather from whiting. It's just a brown hackle. Whatever brown hackle you have. And I'm going to pull out the tips. You want a nice soft hackle to make the legs. So I'm going to pull out the tips like that. Separate them. Cut that off. Alright, now that I got that tip cut off. Then I'm going to take about six or so, eight maybe, fibers on each side. Separate them out like that. Pull them back. Pull them into their natural position. And those are going to be my legs. I'm going to set that right on top. And you see I'm going to set that V right where I want to tie it down. Which is right behind that bead. So I'm going to put that right like that. I got those legs. That's the right length of legs I want. I want them just to go right behind the dubbing like you can see there. Just going to hold it down. Pinch it on both sides. Hold it in place and make three or four nice wraps there. Alright, I like that. And trim that off. Oops. Okay, I like how that went there. They all stayed over the sides like I want. I can tweak them just a little bit. If you need to, put a touch more dubbing on there. Not much. But I'm going to put just a touch. to clean it up just a hair and the last thing we're going to put on is the wing case for the wing case i'm using some mottled oak, mottled oak golden yeah sorry golden stone thin skin and you see here i cut out about a 3 16th of an inch wide strip and one end of it i cut a little v in it that's going to be the back of the wing case and i'm going to set that right on top and i want that v to go right to the back of that dubbing so Set it on top and tie it down. I make about three nice wraps there and then flip it backwards and whip finish. All right, get one or two nice small whip finishes on there and then Trim our thread, trim our thin skin, make sure I got my legs where I want them. There you see, hanging out the side right like that, which is nice. And then I'm going to come in with some medium viscosity and go right up over the top of this bead and thin skin, create just a little hump and secure all that down there, just like that. And that's all that's to this fly. Nice little pattern here. Nice stone fly pattern. Going to catch you some fish. Alright guys. Hope you like that pattern. Really cool pattern. I didn't really show you. I went back to my turkey bite quills. To use for the tail in this. And I'm using not this side of the feather. But I'm using the bites on the other side of the feather. 
use whatever you have. If you have goose biots, they work just great. But I wanted the golden stone. I had this color laying, you know, hanging on the wall over here. So I just used that instead of turkey. I used turkey biot quills instead of goose biots. No big deal, does the same job, just that was the color I chose to use. Have fun tying, guys. Experiment, try different colors. Pay attention to things in the stream. When you're out fishing, lift up the logs, lift up the rocks. Catch those golden stones, see what color they really are. You might be surprised, they're not all the same color. They molt their skin, they turn white sometimes. I've found white ones under rocks. Um, very, very interesting species. That's why, that, why they're one of my favorite species to tie. So have fun tying, experiment, downsize on them, upsize on them, you know, have them in a variety of sizes to match the situation you're fishing. Uh, this spring I've been seeing a ton of smaller ones. So that's what I went with. I went with a size 12 on that Daiichi 1260 hook and it's about perfect size wise. So Thanks for watching, guys. Any of the material you need to tie this, like always, please go to our website, wholesingersflyshop.com. And uh, you want me to tie any of these or any other fly, you can always reach out to me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. So thanks for watching. Until I bring you another one next week, I'm Sean Holsinger.